Okay, good morning, dear participants. I think we have uh, almost uh, 100 registered uh, persons, but uh, maybe, or I'm sure someone, someone can participate in the morning and someone's in the afternoon. So I am Mervi. I'm Mervi Freeman from HAMC. I'm working as a research manager in uh, EDU Research Center. So my topic is research of higher education and especially sustainability in higher education. So uh, this day is one event in the serial of RAN Plus workshops. This is the third one and our group, which is work package four, will organize still two in September, the 6th of September, how to be a successful researcher and 20th of September approaches to early stage research supervision. But today about the attractive research career parts. Uh, Shibon will tell some words about EU Plus, so I go straight to the uh, focus of this workshop, information on European goals of researcher, results of the RAN EU Plus self audit, which we done in January and, and during San January and February, maybe some of you have answer to it. So we analyzed some gaps in researchers' career paths and Virve will tell more about that, these results. Also identification of researchers' skills and competencies and educational needs of researchers will be the team, teams of um, the presentations and the uh, breakout room discussions. And the next, uh, yes, and of course, we will also meet each others. I think we will have about uh, seven breakout rooms and the number of members is something between five and eight. So we hope that it is also a very good opportunity to, to really meet each other and, and change some, some thoughts with each others and share good practices. Also, critical uh, discussions are very welcome because we want to bring together different voices and, uh, and we want to encourage you to really uh, tell freely your th thoughts because your role is very important when we are uh, developing these uh, research career paths in, in RAN Consortium. And then some words about uh, our group today. So we are from all uh, run member universities. Most of us are from TUS, from IPCA and uh, University of Gyur. I can't say the other words. And then some uh, less participants from the others. But anyway, all are presented in this in this day. And also the backgrounds of uh, us are very different. We have master students, a big group of master students, doctoral students, postdoctoral doctoral researches, and uh, some small numbers of lectures, assistant professors, and and so on. But it is uh, richness richness that we are. We are difficult, different today, and we hope that it will guarantee a uh, fruitful discussions to combine these different uh, perspectives. Link it to the registration. We asked you some topics which you wish that will be uh, handled during this day, and here we have gathered them in this list. They were over 20 proposals, and we have marked those ones which we 
hope that we can uh, discuss about today, but there is very many which will be uh, taken on the table on in September. And uh, of course, it is uh, very. Uh, uh, I think many uh, new questions will rose during this day, so we will collect also them. So we really want to have this as a dialogue that that you will give us to, to our work packets for members ideas about the the most important topics you have in your mind. And we want to try to answer to them, answer together, not our group, but we all together can can answer to each others because we have so different backgrounds. And the program of today is as following following. We uh, decided to have short and sharp uh, presentations. So we have 10, 15 minutes uh, short presentations during the day and then two breakout sessions. Hanna will organize us to the groups. Uh, for instance, uh, we will begin with the uh, introduction to RUN and RUN EU. It is very good to, to have this as a basis of today, and Shoban will do this. After that, Patrick will uh, present the research carry framework, and Virve will tell about the self audit and gap analysis. There is also some questions which we took to the program of today because they were very important and in important gaps. So it's it's worth to to discuss about them. Then we have this first breakout session, discussion of research carry parts and a lunch break. Then summaries about breakout session one, and again three, uh, uh, four short presentations and then breakout two. Summaries about breakout two, two and then feedback and next steps of our research training program and some closing messages. We don't have coffee or tea breaks, but you can organize them yourself, for instance, during the breakout sessions. So I think this was my part, uh, Virve and uh, Hanna. Did I forget something important? You can you add. You were perfect. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> so perfect, Hanna will continue. No, perfect, Shoban will continue. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mervi. So before I start, everybody, I'd like to thank Mervi, Verve and Hannah for all the hard work that they have put in to preparing for today. So a lot of behind the scenes organization goes on. So thank you all for that and anybody else who was involved. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now for you. OK, I hope you can all see that. Yes. OK, that's great. Um, right. So some of you have a lot of you have probably heard this presentation already. But for those of you who are new in the audience, I'm delighted to present today a background to the Run EU project and Run EU Plus. So you've heard a lot about Run EU in the last year and a half. Uh, Run stands for Regional European Network, and it is a European university that we have formed um, as a collaboration between the partners that you can see here on the right hand side of the map. So there are seven organizations now involved in RUN. We're all from regions, so we're not from large cities. Uh, we're from regional areas where our colleges have a very important role in developing our region in terms of societal um, or society and our uh, economic uh, development. So on the bottom there, you can see there is all of our logos from the different organisations are presented. Uh, so RUN is a European university 
and there's 41 of these European universities which have been funded by um, the European Union. So the aim of the European Universities Initiative really is to bring Europeans together uh, to encourage mobility across Europe and to identify the skills that are required for the development of our European community and to work with institutes, um, so educational institutes, to develop programmes to make sure that graduates do have the skills that are required. RUN itself then, so our regional European network, it was launched uh, late 2018. Uh, you can see on the left hand side here the, the photograph of the people who are in attendance at the time. So you can see the project even from the get go involved an awful lot of people from across all the partners. So the picture here shows the, the launch of the project, like I said, and that was at the European Embassy in Brussels in late 2018. On the right hand side, then you can see the first meeting of the project and that took place in Limerick. So our European University has 76,000 students, more now I would imagine, 8,000 staff uh, spread over 53 faculties and 97 research centres and groups. So the original alliance, uh, so the original proposal that was submitted to the, the EU were of eight partners. So the leaders were Politecnico de Leria in Portugal, uh, Limerick Institute of Technology and Athlone Institute of Technology have merged since then. So we are now the Technological University of the Shannon. Hame University of Applied Sciences in Finland. Uh, Politecnico do Cabado Edo Ave in Portugal. NHL Stenden University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. Szczecinist van University in Hungary and Wallerberg University of Applied Sciences in Austria. So as I go through the presentation, you'll see that the focus of RUN um, EU or European University is on regional development. So it's very important then that the project is steered throughout its lifetime uh, by external stakeholders. So people from our regions who are very involved in the college work and how we can support them for regional development. So you can see there 34 associates were involved in the submission of the proposal, are involved every day in steering or run project. So you can see there's 17 regional authorities. I won't go through them all, but you can read them there for yourselves. Now, the mission and vision. So the first thing, the real aim and objective of Run EU is to develop a strong European university. So we all work together very closely as partners and we integrate everything we do to focus on the ultimate goal, which is the final one there, to address big societal challenges and become a true engine of regional development. So you will see as we go through the presentation that your role as researchers is very important and is vital to addressing those big societal challenges. How do we do it? So realising our vision then. So first of all, as I said already, RUNEU aims to really integrate um, the partners across the Alliance and to become a true European university. We're going to encourage mobility programmes and the mobility of our staff and students across Europe and to visit and to have placements in each one of the partners. And finally, then, we're currently developing new educational platforms. So these are unique to run uh, our European Mobility Innovation Centre, Future and Advanced Skills Academies and European Innovation Hubs. And I'll go into those in more detail a little further on. So here's how the project is actually structured. And again, you can see at the very bottom um, and it's quite a large block on the actual diagram. So that shows you how important it is. And these are our steering committee. So we call it our Run EU General Assembly. And in that General Assembly, there are presidents and rectors of our colleges, 
student representatives who form a very important part and have a very important role in that General Assembly. The associated partners, so the 34 external stakeholders that I mentioned, and international experts. So we meet on an annual basis then, and um, they inform what is, well, we inform them about updates on the project, and they guide us and steer us and say what is relevant and where we should go and where our focus should be. So if we look at the different aspects of the project then, we have the European Innovation Hubs, Future and Advanced Skills Academies and the European uh, Mobility Innovation Centre. So I've already mentioned those three. But a key pillar is our Run EU Discovery Programme. So that is our research work package. And of course, research is a central cog in our European University. It's our offerings, one of the offerings that we give to our regional stakeholders. And it's very important that we actually set up good collaborative projects with our um, industry and our societal partners. Short advanced programmes, so some of you have re as researchers may have already gotten involved in those and you are also always welcome to get involved in those. And we also focus on collaborative European degrees. So currently across the Run EU Alliance, we are setting up and designing uh, double degrees at bachelor level and joint degrees at that level joint degrees at thought masters and research masters and doctoral level. So the Future and Advanced Skills Academies then, what are they all about? Well, they are all about uh, delivering and developing new courses that will ensure that graduates have the skills that are required by our industry and societal partners uh, to ensure the, the development of the region. The European Mobility Innovation Centre then, again, this is our centre that supports the mobility, as I said already, of our staff, of our researchers and our students across all of the partners in the Alliance. The European Innovation Hubs then, this is where the interface, it's where our research and teaching meet, meet um, the, the industry and the societal partners. So we have three innovation hubs that we have set up. The first one is a in uh, future, um, future regional development, so future and sustainable re regional development, bioeconomy and social innovation. So I won't go through them all now, but you can see at the bottom there, there are very ambitious targets that are set for each one of these, and we are working our way through those at the moment. Ultimately, the regional development um, is, I said, the ultimate goal. So the vision that Run EU has is to develop this European zone for interregional development. And there's four main pillars. So we have an education zone, a business and enterprise zone, a regional government zone, and a social and cultural zone. And they are being developed and built as we speak. The research then, uh, an audit was carried out of the expertise and the infrastructure that was in existence across each one of the partners. And these, um, these research areas then were clustered and eight areas were identified. So these are identified, they are in existence now for over a year, and all of these clusters are working together um, and they are applying for new grants, they are working with companies and they are developing new expertise for our European University. So the, the cluster areas then, they were actually mapped to the Horizon Europe Pillar 2 clusters. And you can see the different areas. So we have creative art, design and materials thinking, food and biotechnology, tourism, IoT and cybersecurity, advanced manufacturing, climate change, circular economy and decarbonisation, education and social sciences and health and well-being. So many of you as researchers will already be associated with some one or maybe more of those cluster areas. So this leads me on then to the project that I'm managing. So the Run EU Plus project is a supporting project for the main Run EU project. So while Run EU is funded by the Erasmus Plus programme, uh, Run EU Plus is funded by Horizon 2020. 
and the plus then stands for professional research programs for business and society. So again, it says it in the title, the focus is on building research collaborations with industry and societal partners and through those research connections, building and developing uh, professional practice based research masters and doctoral programs. So the objectives then, well, the first one is to identify a common research and innovation agenda for RUN EU. So the whole purpose of that agenda will be to strengthen the relationship and the collaborations between academia, so our, our higher education institutions um, and businesses deliver joint and collaborative practice based research degree programs at both masters and PhD levels. And again, this will be done in consultation with our partners, with our regional partners. And these are going to be professional practice based research degree programs. So most of the programs will have their researchers working in industry, in societal organisations and undertaking their PhD or master's programme in that environment. So for you as researchers then, today you are sitting here in a training programme that was developed out of our uh, human capital work package. So we recognise that you are, sorry, that you are vital to the success of the Run EU Plus project. So researchers are our link between our educational um, institutions and our companies. We're developing a cloud of knowledge portal which will be available soon. So all of the training equipment or all of the training videos um, will actually and support material will be put up and stored on that cloud of knowledge portal for you to access throughout your studies uh, whenever you might need it. Some of you may have attended last week our open science workshops. So this is very important to us as well. And the training programs in the future will contain more programs and more workshops about open science. So then we're going to cooperate again in our research and innovation activities, and we're going to push the European um, research agenda as well. So I showed you the structure already of the Run EU Run EU project. So this is the structure of the Run EU Plus project. You can see it's focused on researchers and researcher development, as well as the research projects that will be carried out. So developing a common research and innovation agenda um, is the first thing that we have been working on. We're currently working on yourselves, developing yourselves as researchers, so strengthening human cap um, capital, mainstreaming of open science practices, and then we have our, um, our work package that is involved with the development of our practice based research masters and PhD programs. And finally, then dissemination, outreach and sustainability. So here was the original team at the launch of the Run EU Plus project. We have expanded now six months later, so eight months later, there are 77 of us involved. And the deliverables, so what is the focus of the project? Uh, we have already identified our strategic research priority areas for the master's and PhD programmes. So they are digitalisation, sustainability and social innovation. We're currently working on our de uh, degree development roadmap and our accreditation action plan. Today you are sitting as at one of the first workshops of our researcher career development program. So today, as Mervy already says, is very important um, for you to have a say and have an input because you are our researchers. So you are working and researching in your current environment and we want to see how can we make that better for you. I've already mentioned the cloud of knowledge portal, so we already have a beta version of that developed um, and we, we will be launching um, it very soon. We have started our open science skills training program. We have launched um, an, a, an array, three different networks of ambassadors across the Run EU um, organization. So we have our research and innovation ambassadors, open science ambassadors and gender and diversity ambassadors. And their role really is to be our voice across um, all of our partner institutions. Now I just missed one. 
Sorry. Oh, that's it. OK. Now, so that's the end of my presentation. Just giving you a brief overview of RunEU and RunEU Plus. Thank you, Murphy. Thank you, Sibon. It is always very interesting to hear the presentation because uh, so much is happening all the time. So it's always a bit different and some new new news every time in, in these presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, the next speaker will be Dr. Patrick Murray from TUS. Patrick, could you present yourself with some words in the beginning? Of course, I need to turn off the microphone. So good morning, everybody. Um, and I'm delighted to be here today, supported by Hamk in Finland. Uh, in talking to you about the researcher career development framework program. So I'm wondering, can you see my slides? I presume you can. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So. My name is Pauli. I'm the head of research and technology transfer at TUS. I'm the coordinator of RunEU Plus working with Siobhan. I'm delivering on the project objectives that you've just heard about. So just I one moment, Patrick. Uh, we can uh, not see the full screen version of the slides. OK, let's see if I can fix that. How's that? Yes, thank you so much. So the European flagship university initiative has currently 41 alliances, approximately 280 universities. Just under 300 million euro in funding representing 27 member states, but that's still less than 10% of all of the universities and higher education institutions in Europe. So we are part of a select group. I think we've all recognized that the education landscape across Europe is changing. And at the Gothenburg summit of 2017, the EU leaders outlined a vision for strengthening strategic partnerships across the EU between higher education institutions, encouraging the emergence by 2024 of the European universities. As I mentioned, there are now 41 and Run EU is one of those. Uh, the whole idea uh, is to enable students to obtain a degree by combining studies in several European countries and contribute to the international competitive of European universities on the global stage. And that, of course, includes research degrees. And that's really why we're here uh, in Run EU Plus and why we're here today. So Siobhan has um, very excellently outlined the Run EU Plus project, and what we're talking about today sits within the work package on strengthening human capital. So the researcher career development framework program. So I, research and innovation activities are the defining hallmark of higher education and university education. They inform teaching and learning and they add to the global body of knowledge. And the treaty on the functioning of the European Union has a stated ob objective and that is that strengthening its scientific and technological basis by achieving a European research area in which we as researchers, scientific knowledge and technology circulate freely. And I should have said at the beginning, uh, and I meant to, that I am a researcher. I'm speaking to you from a research background. Um, I undertook my PhD at University College Galway in Ireland. I've then worked um, for different periods in my life as a researcher at KTH University in Stockholm, at VTT Biotechnology Research Centre in Finland, at the University of Ghent in Belgium, and since 2009, uh, originally at Limerick Institute of Technology and now the Technological University of the Shannon. Valuing human research capital, that's us, the researcher community, is evidential as a critical factor in reaping economic and social societal rewards from investment in research. 
ensuring excellent research is acknowledged to be vastly improved by investing in our talents, our skills, our career development, and is set out in the European Charter for Researchers. Attractive conditions afforded to us have a strong positive correlation on the quality of the research outputs that we produce. So all good for our universities. We have improved the output and quality of our own capital within Europe, but I think we'll all agree deficiencies still remain. And in the bottom right hand corner, I, um, I borrowed a slide from my HAMP colleagues on some on a survey done uh, on the challenges to research so some of the words you'll see down there. But ultimately, a lack of structured progression to employment within academia is one of the big deficiencies while recognizing that opportunities are not at times limited or they are at times limited across our sector because there aren't enough academic positions for all of the researchers. However, there are varying levels of learning and development opportunities, careers, advisory services, training programs like the one we hope to develop in this program across the sector for researchers. This widespread precarity of researcher conditions, the lack of available career paths is directly associated with reduced returns on research funding. While better structures, conditions for researcher career opportunities will lead to higher innovation performance and research outputs. Again, all good for our universities. One of the key take home messages from me this morning is that retaining a core group of highly skilled and high performance researchers to continue to grow and deliver impactful research outputs is the ascent is essential to the run university research and innovation strategy. So the work package strengthening human capital has four primary objectives. One is to identify the current best practice across Europe in the deployment of human resource strategies for researcher career development. Two is to introduce a, a career development program to support our researchers in identifying clear personal paths for their careers. We wish to encourage intersectoral and international mobility while fostering diversity, inclusiveness, gender equality and balance in our research teams across the university. Three, we wish to introduce a career, a research career evaluation system across the consortium to reward researchers and research excellence at all career development stages. And finally, and I'm not going to spend too long talking about it, Siobhan has articulated uh, a cloud of knowledge portal which will ultimately equip all our researchers with a combination of research skill sets and tools to allow them to achieve their own goals. So what do we propose to do? We will support, encourage and advocate for research or career development within the Rani University. The goal is that researchers will have both good competencies and transferable skills and possibilities to plan their career and learning paths. Enhanced and more visible career prospects also contribute to the building of a positive public attitude towards the researcher profession. We aim to strengthen the attractiveness of researcher career paths and hopefully encourage more young Ronnie U undergraduate students to embark on careers in research within the consortium. The programme itself will be supported from the original Run EU work plan, again articulated excellently by Siobhan earlier, Work Package 4, which is the European Mobility Innovation Centre, and critically Work Package 2 and Work Package 5, which are the European Research Innovate, or European Innovation Hubs and the Run EU Discovering, Discovery Programme, which supports researchers' mobility and research and innovation inter internships across the consortium. But ultimately, we're here to work with you. The researcher community during today, following your feedback to develop a researcher career framework that delivers for you. I have some slides here again. I borrowed from my hand colleagues. I'm not going to go through them, but they'll be there for you to review after today. There are some transferable skills examples here for early career researchers and um, this is the mobility program award within the run discovery program that i spoke of so there are three types of mobilities available uh, these are listed here as well as um 
the types of mobility activity that researchers might wish to undertake at run EU partner institutions. And those calls are open in all of your institutions currently, uh, to my knowledge. And then finally, Siobhan has again articulated earlier the eight research cluster teams um, within the run EU project. So that's That's all that's really for me this morning. I, I, I wish you all a great day. I hope you enjoy uh, interacting with each other in the breakout rooms in particular and critically to us all in the project. It's your feedback that's going to actually uh, drive this framework program forward over the next uh, two and a half years. So thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick, for the very interesting and important words. Uh, so uh, the next presentation will be by Virve and it's about the self audit and gap analysis which we, we done in in winter and uh, Virve, Telle and me we read all the reports very carefully and and make the first version of the analysis to our uh, work package for group and I have to say that it was really interesting to read them. It was like a short visit to all these run universities. So it uh, it was possible to get very much information about the career paths of, of researchers in these run universities. But Virve, you will tell us more about the results. Yeah, thank you, Mervi Adam. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, I am Irve Kalimi Chambers and working at the uh, University, Hame University of Applied Sciences. Um, I work in the global education team, but also very much in this Run EU Plus project and leading this work package for. Uh, so we can go to a next slide. And so I have a, the, here some of this these thoughts that I want to bring up regarding this researcher's career. And, uh, and so I will say about this report that has been already referred to, and you already also caught that before the workshop, uh, this report. And uh, so I will say a few results from that, and then also refer to one kind of new staff in the universities and, and uh, also uh, refer to some research results which tell that how researchers construct their continuity in in a, in their researcher career and um, then finally some words about happy stories as a researcher but so before uh, i will go to these to these thoughts so uh, Hannah has put also on chat uh, the link or the information on this kind of uh, Mentimeter environment. And uh, there you could, uh, you are asked to write like Max 3 with Max 3 words that uh, what motivates you in your work as a researcher. If you are not acting as a researcher, because also there were quite many registered to this workshop that they are uh, so-called other staff at the university. So if you are not a researcher, so you can also just uh, think that someone, some uh, researchers and uh, that what, how do you think that what motivates, motivates them in their work. And so I give you now like uh, two minutes uh, time to open this and then answer answer to this question and we will see and we will look this word cloud then later today but so please answer on this question i close my mic now for a while
Yes, and maybe we can go then to the next slide and you can complete your answer if it is not yet done. But so I this has come up already. So uh, in this um, run new plus, uh, so we we map these uh, existing researcher career paths and uh, support for researchers in partner universities. And um, as um, Siobhan and uh, Patrick already like brought up these um, big goals uh, in our consortium and in collaboration. So this this task, this work that we we like map these existing circumstances. So that is and there will be also one pace to um, continue with these development tasks. Uh, so I take just like few of these caps that we identified regarding these researcher career paths and development issues. So, um, so in some universities, there are quite clear, there are clear like career paths for the researchers, but this is not the situation in all universities. So that there are not clear views for how to make progress. What are the next steps in, in, my, in my career as a researcher? Also, uh, that is quite, it is very common discussion and discourse this, that researchers, they have to use a lot of time uh, ensuring their um, in employment uh, contract at the university by uh, writing research proposals. Of course, it is can, can be also, and it is very inspiring task to collaborate and find new ideas and so on. But so that um, this funding system in higher education, it is the kind that this is just a situation that researchers need to use quite a lot of time for this task. And it is, it is also experienced sometimes as negative side of the university. Recruitment of researchers that are um, now working outside, uh, but they want to come back to the university. They might they have like doctorate, for instance, and so uh, they want to come back to work with the university. So that is not so clear uh, how how it is appreciated at the university. Uh, this kind of career path and not necessarily announced publicly so clearly. Uh, Project-based research, it is common way for researchers to work in our universe, partner universities, but so uh, um, this other side of this, this practice is that the possibilities to concentrate on, on one topic or especially the kind of theme that, that has, you have done research earlier, so that is not already or it is limited, this possibility. A uh, role of teaching is not either so clear uh, in researchers tasks for in some universities in, in con our consortium. It is, it is mentioned very clearly, but not in all. And this is also something that we will discuss uh, further. And related to these teaching tasks, so universities um, have changed in a way that it's not anymore researchers or teacher researchers that teach, but they're also supporting staff. Uh, they organize training and education for students and for the staff. International collaboration, of course, that is a traditional and a base for the science and, uh, and for researchers work, uh, but so the, when we think these practices that how on the organizational level it is it is like recognized and and um, noticed that this takes international collaboration takes time. So in our our report or results, we also got this these um, comments that there could be better practices uh, in in uh, organizing time for international collaboration. Doctoral training possibilities in our universities consortium, two universities are now allowed to provide a doctoral degree. And of course, that is essential part of the researchers' paths, career paths. Uh, but uh, so this is like this limitation. Uh, so it is, it is possible to provide training, uh, doctoral training. And, uh, and so that it can be done in collaboration. And that is something that we are, we are now also working with in our consortium. 
a researcher training program as this of this workshop today is also part of that that is something that we we develop and that is also that was also identified as one one uh, cap in existing practices supervision training is um, in some universities they have the supervision training but not in not all in all universities uh, and so that's one cap identified cap and we will work with that also uh, it was mentioned that salaries um, at the university compared to salaries of doctorates in industry uh, they are not necessarily the same kinds and it's higher in industry and that is something that could be discussed um, in in at the universities but of course some of these issues are also the kind that that um they are they are negotiated on that level that that one researcher doesn't necessarily have so much uh, input on this, but um, it is also to take it up these discussions. In the next slide, on the next slide, then uh, there are also there is a little bit repeating some some issues, but if we think the uh, researchers' point of view, what kind of training uh, researchers might need and more support uh, based on this report and results that we got. So uh, this is one issue that we will work attracting how to attract young talents. Teaching is one forum, but then there are many other ways, uh, social media. And and yes, this is just one one kind of cap. <laughs> and uh, then uh, we can think about the support, more support in science communication and and also discuss about the IT support for researchers. Intellectual property um, training is one topic that came up. Open science, um, awareness of, of that field. Career services, uh, at least one university, if I remember right, has, has a likely a career service, uh, but not all. And that is, can we do something with that area like together? And uh, supervisor training, and then this uh, how to increase collaboration systematically, like also in your wishes when you re registered into this workshop. So there was mentioned that that uh, want to like develop uh, networks or not networks with uh, with the researchers that are in the same field, and that is something that we will also discuss and try to improve these possibilities in different way. Project manage management related also to innovative practices um, were mentioned as a some kind of cap and this um, not clear career paths, uh, these progression opportunities and then the evaluation and reward system for researchers uh, and that is we will work with. So um, on this slide, so you you have on this uh, left side there is this this model um, which is I think it is also quite quite known and and understood quite well that as a one researcher career um, path <laughs> so that doctoral ed training and, and degree is is part of that and then you can continue from postdoc to senior researcher and then also professorships in our uh, consortium the titles of the researchers they vary and and, uh, and um, so it it makes this that we we don't have now any like one model in in our consortium for the researchers, but so we will work with this and discuss with this. Uh, yes, I want to also here highlight this um, new kind of staff at the universities, uh, thinking like 10 years or, or something like that, that a new growing staff group and they, it is called uh, like third space or it can be called third space in higher education. So they are like people that they have researchers background, a doctorate degree and um, and but so they uh, are not acting as a researcher actively. Um, they might like write some articles here now and then, but that is not their main work, but they are working closely with researchers, supporting them in different different ways. And um, and this is a new a new staff in that sense that that they don't um, 
work exactly the same way as traditional administrative um, staff works. And this is also like interesting, or maybe it is interesting, like career thought some for some of you. And yes, I, I might. It, I yeah, myself, I identify myself to this this group quite a lot. And on the next slide, we have. Um, yes, uh, I took here some like research. I refer here to one research. Um, it is interview research, and the data is from Finland and and postdocs, postdoc researchers. And they were asked um, how they continue, how they built their uh, their continuity in their researchers' career. And then from this data, it was identified like five types of of researchers. And you can like think that if if this is sounds relevant in your context uh, or as a researcher that how would you describe yourself based on on this slide that what how you build continuity but in this data so this one type of researcher that uh, he or she was very committed to this uh, uh, academic value of freedom and that was like the base that how he builds and wanted to or she wanted to build uh, her career and um, Yes, how possible it is, and that is a little bit another question. But that is the way how how like person then wants to con con uh, construct the continuity, and then this kind of academic worker was identified. This kind of postdoc that is flexible in that sense that is willing to take teaching jobs um, and then researchers uh, work, and um, but so that it's not so so like. A, engaged or committed to especially to one one topic but but by that kind of behaving and attitude is also uh, like able to to uh, continue the research uh, at the university then um as i said already that the researchers they they like um many of them they teach but then um at least in Finland, in universities, that um, there are many postdocs that they might get a lot of like offers to do teaching, and in time it might lead to this that they find themselves that they are mainly teaching, and then it is um, it can become also one kind of trap as it is uh, on CV. It is not. Um, a, uh, when you apply the position of researcher, then it is not like recognized or it's not uh, appreciated that you have done so much teaching and then you you haven't published so much. So in that way, the, in this research, this was called as victim of the teaching trap. But that was also the way to to like uh, construct continuity in to stay at the university and also some in some research activities. Then, of course, this that to belong to one research group and have loyalty to that, so that that uh, provides often these possibilities that you, you are applying funding together, and then then you will get like a contract for for two or three years, and uh, so so it is a good good opportunity to build and construct continuity. And then this last one is it is in this research I refer to it was called academic freelancer as the that this person researcher is not like engaged strongly to one university or to one organization, but is building own uh, networks locally, internationally, uh, regionally and uh, in multi-professional groups and also is writing different kind of articles and this this ensures uh, her or his possibilities to to do research as well so these types kind of types i see that time is running but i think this is almost the last one this refer this um slide um uh, yes why i put this here it is because um Many you can might have also heard yourself that the researchers uh, might also complain quite a lot about this that how how there is not really continuity. But this um, data or these quotes on this slide that they are uh, from the researchers that they they are happy with their 
with their work and uh, this data is interview data is from UK and um, and this quotes they bring up this that what are these brings these issues that features that bring bring like happiness into researchers work that enjoying doing what you are doing also like teaching and also it is a secure job and then have some autonomy and also some status so this can be like uh, um, taken up from this quote also in another research um, meaningful research teachers work what kind of features was found that this that you are um, you feel that you are um, valued your work is valued and you have impact on students you have impact on on the society doing something good and you have this feeling that you belong uh, to some some somewhere and then you have this collaborative community these were the features um, that in this one research so and the like this run you plus so that it will it is concentrating on this practice based research and so, so this, um, I think the all what we are, we are like aiming is that there will be happy stories <laughs> in, in future also um, among researchers and, um, and that of course uh, you are, your role as a researcher is to, to continue um, in developing your skills and, uh, and uh, one result in research has been that open mind is very essential thinking the the constructing the continuity <laughs> in in your career. Um, yes, yeah, so I will. Hopefully, I didn't um, spoke too too much. I didn't speak too much. But so that um, then now we will continue in breakout rooms, and um, but I will stop here. So, Mervi, do you want to continue? Uh, yes, I only want to thank you, Virve. Very interesting and very positive uh, uh, viewpoints which you in the end presented us, and also the the key points from the gap and uh, gap analysis. And we really noticed that we have very much to share and and to learn from each others, as you showed us. But now Hanna will give us guidelines.